Hola, estamos aquí en Múnich con la profesora Françoise Barré-Sinoussi, Premio Nobel de Medicina del año 2008. Françoise, thank you for making yourself available for this interview. Thank you. I would like to start going a little bit back to the years in which you discovered HIV. What was your immediate reaction and what did you see from the scientific community as a response? Um, immediate reaction, it's not immediate because, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process. So the first step was to isolate a virus, <laughs> uh, which uh, was apparently a new one, but uh, you have to characterize the virus, you have to make sure that the virus is uh, the cause of the disease uh, and so on. So that is taking several months. At least I can say that uh, at, uh, in September 1983, we were sure that the virus was the cause of AIDS already. The reaction was first to convince the scientific community that uh, it was the cause of AIDS. The second point was to rush, to rush because uh, it was a need to develop a diagnostic test. It was a need uh, uh, to uh, better characterize the virus. It was a need to know better the replication cycle of the virus. Everything has to be done. So we had to rush. So the, the, the point was also to mobilize to mobilize others to work with us because we were a small team. <laughs> uh, so we had to mobilize uh, other experts in immunology, in molecular biology, in, uh, uh, in basic science as well, yes. and clinicians as well, because we started to, to work with one clinician in France, but we had to work with others. Uh, and also to think about international collaboration, And I must say that started quite quickly with uh, the CDC in Atlanta uh, as soon as uh, I think it was already uh, uh, July 1983 that we had relationship with Atlanta. I, I think relationship with communities, at least for me, started really 1984. So uh, very, very, very close to the discovery. One year later. Yeah. One year later because we had one of the first community organization in France was created in 1984. It was ED. Ed. And uh, they contacted me uh, to ask me to come to uh, uh, the community and explain to them what was the virus we isolate, uh, what was uh, all uh, the evidences that the virus was could be the cause of the disease. And, I mean, the most thing that they were interested, what's next? What's next? Uh, how uh, uh, you can develop a treatment, how you can have a vaccine, uh, all these things. The impact in real life of our patients. Yeah, so, sure. so it was really a, 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 a nice exchange about uh, their, their expectation, of course. It was a lot of expectation. That was a difficult period, by the way, because, you know, as a scientist, Or as a condition, you know, that take time. Yes. And uh, clearly some of the people who were uh, with, uh, with me at that time will not be able to, to wait. Of course. So let's come to nowadays. What would be, in your, in your, in your view, the major challenge we are confronting? Scientifically, yeah. Yeah? Scientifically, I mean, the two biggest challenge for me is, of course, to have a cure and to have a vaccine. How far are we? But uh, we are far. <laughs> <laughs> It's not for tomorrow. Uh, I don't know when it will be. Um, I think uh, we are in, on the right direction for, I will not say HIV cure, but at least HIV persistent remission. Remission. Uh, that's possible. How many years? I don't know. But, you know, the approaches that I can see by combining several approaches, probably also to adapt according to biomarkers in each patient, I think it's, a, it's the right direction. 
So let's move on and, and see what happens in the coming this year. Is, this is the important message. We should not abandon this, this issue. No. Even if it's so difficult. Even if difficult, we have to move on and to make progress. For vaccine, I'm a little bit more pessimistic. Uh, also, I think we, we still have to, to go on and, and to work on it. But for me, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think we need to go back to basic science, yeah. to basic science in immunology, uh, because it seems to me that we don't understand very well the mechanism uh, that uh, the body should develop uh, in order to have protective response. Yeah. Uh, so it's, in my opinion, much more complex than we are thinking. Uh, it's not only a question of broadly neutralizing antibody, which is great. I mean, I'm not saying that we don't need broadly neutralizing antibody. It's part, part of the response. But it's part of the response. We don't even know if they play a role uh, by which mechanism. Maybe it's not by neutralization. Maybe it's by other mechanisms and an association of different mechanisms okay. that you have to understand. Uh, regarding cellular immune response, we probably need them, but which one uh, and how to induce the good one? Uh, we don't know what is the role of innate immunity in that process for both developing uh, antibodies and uh, T-cell immune response. It's, a, it's a plenty of uh, unknown yeah. mechanisms that we have to resolve, in my opinion. So let's go back to basic immunology. Back to basics. Yeah. Last question. As an outstanding science scientist, female scientist, what would be your message for young, young girls that are starting in the scientific career? Well, my message is very simple. If uh, you are highly motivated, if you are sure it's the way you'd like to go to help the other, because that's not for your career, it's for the others. If you are motivated to do something for others, go ahead. You will have a lot of, uh, of barrier on, 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 your, on your way. But when you are motivated, you just go on and show the man the, what a woman is capable to do. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome.